Hello, my name is Akita Mott Page. I'm a senior at North Carolina A&T. I am Paul Price, rising senior. Attending institution is Hampton University. Good morning, my name is John Avenue. I'm a rising sophomore and I attend Morgan State University. And for this summer, we researched the Point Edge app using Intel OpenVINO Toolkit. Summarize our project, we'll be deploying edge artificial intelligent applications on Internet of Things devices. We'll be doing this using Intel's OpenVINO Toolkit. Because we're deploying the application on a resource constrained IoT device, we'll be using pre-trained models that will then run through a model optimizer to generate the intermediate representation form. That form will then be inputted into an inference engine in order to run the application. Then the inference results will be displayed on the web-based user interface. Because we're deploying our applications on edge, we will need to learn about edge computing. Edge computing is when data is processed closer to the source where IoT devices can analyze the information in near real time. There are several advantages such as reduced network latency, less computation, and increased security since the information is saved locally on the device. In the diagram, there are several, it gives several applications of edge computing. Um, one popular one right now is autonomous cars, which need to analyze and process information in real time. Artificial intelligence algorithms, or AI, are processed locally on an IoT device. Artificial intelligence or machine learning applications include natural language processing, computer vision, which is particular to our project and many others. Pre-trained models are based on deep neural networks. Deep neural networks are designed to analyze data and draw conclusions using a layered structure of algorithms. We are specifically using a people counter AI application. If we were to use a security camera as an edge device, the box in the diagram shows how we would proceed. The pre-trained model locates people in the video frame, the application does calculations, that data and the frames are sent to a user interface using MQTT communication protocol and FFmpeg, and then the user interface is displayed on a local web server. A security camera as an edge device can perform analysis in real time where the user can watch the surveillance video on a smartphone. Compared to a traditional security camera, where the images are have to be sent far away to a cloud and then played back later for the analysis. Here are the steps to deploying our edge artificial intelligence. Set up the environment by installing Ubuntu 18043 operating system on a virtual box. Import the pre-trained AI models. Install Intel's OpenVINO on Ubuntu. Develop the people counter edge application and finally run the application. Ubuntu 18.04.3, also known as Bionic Beaver, is a Linux-based operating system that was compatible with the research. VirtualBox is a software that handles virtual machines. That allows us to easily run multiple guest operating systems. OpenVINO Toolkit, version 2020.3. This toolkit was useful for quickly developing applications and solutions that emulate human vision. With OpenVM, we were able to optimize and deploy deep learning models, accelerate and optimize low-level image processing capabilities using the OpenCV library, and we were also able to maximize the performance of the application. Here is the unpacking of the installation file. This is the installation GUI that we ran, and here's installing the external dependencies, and then lastly, installing additional prerequisites. So that's the OpenCV that I mentioned earlier, or CMake, for example. So here's the verification script that we ran. And what the verification script does is it downloads an intermediate representation for the SqueezeNet model, which allows us to run the demo, which essentially confirms that we did do the installation correctly. And here's the model optimizer, which creates that intermediate representation that I was speaking about earlier. And then after it creates the intermediate representation, it optimizes it so that we can feed that into the inference engine. 
here's an example of that. And here is the workflow that we are moving through. So here we have an example of what kind of reductions we can gain from the model optimizer. The original cafe model here is about five megabytes. And then the intermediate representation is about two and a half megabytes in total. So that is about half the reduction or technically 48 to 49%. And um, this ends up being the intermediate representation ends up being about half of the original model size. Here we have the person detection retail network, and that is the model that we use for our people account application. It's based on the mobile net version two, and that's a neural network optimized for object detection and semantic segmentation. This process simplifies the image to be easier analyzed, and semantic segmentation just means that the background is being separated from the objects of interest. And here we have the format for the input into the model. Batch size, number of channels, three, because it's a three color image, um, height and width of the image, and the expected order for this is BGR. People Counter Artificial Intelligence Application. Our People Counter app is supposed to accomplish these five tasks. It needs to be able to read a video or image input, pre-process it for an intermediate representation, process the output with boundaries around each new person in the frame, it needs to be able to calculate the number of people present in the frame, how many there were in total and for how long, and send that frame to a server and display it. Reading video input. Located in the main Python script file are a few lines of code that are responsible for checking for a video input. As shown on the picture on the right, the code checks for input stream video. And if one is not found, the system prints on the screen, specified input file doesn't exist. If an input is found, an open CV captures the input video. After reading the video input, it needs to be pre-processed using OpenCV. OpenCV is a library for computer vision solutions. So all that a video is, is multiple frames or images that are displayed quickly in a loop. So every single image will first need to be converted into a NumPy vector. The computer will read the image as this vector, and in the vector, each element will represent an intensity of brightness in the pixel where zero will equal black, and then 255 will equal white. Using Python, OpenCV resizes the image from 525 by 600 to 544 by 320. We are resizing it to match the input size requirement of our person detection model. The vector mentioned before is then divided into three different color channels, which are shown on the left, where the width and height are the resize values. The bar below is showing the length of each vector of the channels. Normalization is a pre-processing step. When we normalize something, in this case, we map it to a range between zero and one. And we do this by dividing all the pixel values by 255. In this case, the largest value available. After running the model optimizer, we import the IR files into the inference engine. We do this by initializing the IE network, which will contain information about the network model that's read from the IR. In the IR files are the XML and BIM files, which are the architecture and weight of the model. Load information about the network input layers into the IE plugin, and then initialize the plugin to a specified device. Although there's several types of device, will be deploying on a CPU device. The plugin supports the performance of neural networks on a CPU device using a math library for deep neural networks. Then loading the network that was read from the IR into the plugin will create a working network. Video handling. To capture the video, we will need to run a while loop. And as long as the loop is checked as true, Python will display the frames on our user interface. Then we need to set a threshold value on the potential object size. When the probability is more than a threshold, a bounding box is strong. Some calculations 
that we need our application to perform. We need to count the number of people in the current frame. We need to add to the total tally of people in the video. And we need to calculate the duration for which a person has been in the frame. Additionally, we also need to publish these analytics to the UI. MQTT communication. MQTT is one of a few popular messaging protocols used for IoT communication, as it is optimized for high latency or unreliable network. The MQTT server allows the user to send commands to control outputs. In this case, it sends the people count in the current frame, the total number of people counted in the frame, and the duration of each person to the user interface. MQTT serves to publish messages topics from a device or subscribe interest to a particular topic to receive messages. A message is any data that is exchanged between devices. For this case, that would be the people count and the other values previously mentioned. A topic specifies where you want to publish a message before publishing messages to subscribers that we have. However, we have what's called a broker, which receives and filters messages to decide who the messages should be published to. Then we have what's called an FFmpeg server, which captures and encodes image frames in real time and sends them to a local web server. The server we use was called localhost with a port number of 8080. And here's a demonstration of the components set up and running of the people counter app. To run the people counter application, there are three components that need to be set up first in order to send the infra's data and frames to our local host server. Each component will need to be running at the same time in three different tabs. First step, starting the Mosca server. Located in the node server directory is the node in MQTT JavaScript. Running these scripts does two things. First, creates the HTTP local web server and second, sends the inference data to our user interface. As you can see, the Moscow server has started. Second step, starting the GUI. We go to the user interface directory and run the code npm run dev. This will combine and run all the JavaScripts in that directory. Now we have a user interface to display our output on a local web server. See the link of our local web server in blue, which is where the project is running at, and that the webpack has compiled successfully. Third step, starting the FFmpeg server. FFmpeg is a tool which captures and encodes the video in real time. It will send every frame to our local web server. FF server has started. Now that a connection is established, we can run the main and inference Python scripts of our application. We have our inputs, which are the original video file named pedestrian detect, the XML file from the model we use, the device type, which is CPU, and the threshold value, which we found is best set at 0.4. Next is setting the conditions of the FFmpeg server, which is sending our frames. For a good resolution, the pixel format is set to 24 bits per pixel. The output video size is 768 by 432. The frame rate is 24 frames per second for a standard playback speed. And lastly, we have established a network connection. As a part of our results, we were able to display the appropriate analytics 
that being the current and total people count, as well as the duration. Also, we were able to publish these analytics with their respective frames to the user interface.